You're really mean today with a whole five second count. <laughs> what is that? I'm tired of your attitude. That's what that is. Now that there's video, I can express my anger. You know, I can punch you. would have known if he were pensive and thinking about something if he'd done the... I also is... have glasses, but I don't know what to do with mine. I'm just going to so, keep them on. This, this is a pro tip for all you wannabe thespians. Even if you don't need glasses. Even if you don't need glasses, you wear them. It, it helps. I mean, you can see things. No, I mean, for... For a mutt. To emote. Oh, no. I mean, you can just... You don't need glasses. You can just, like, bite your fingers, like... I'm thinking. Or you just ask for a billion dollar ransom. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, video, obviously. Um, that, that was this pointless thing to point out. So you've done your job. Did you also know that we are standing? Usually we're sitting when we talk to you guys, but this time we're standing. The, the effort involved in this episode is just... Immense. Yeah, the, the production notes are actually valid. You're sending... Yeah, there you go. No, shoulders back. Look proud. You're excited to be here. Why? Why are we excited to be here? Today is a special thing that we're doing. Special hey, Rob, day. Hey? So today we have Oktoberfest beers, as you can say, see, laid out before you. Uh, starting off... The can. From Which one? People's Brewing. This one. You have a 50-50 shot. You have a 50-50 shot. People's oh, Brewing. One. The one. God, this one. See, now you're messing with the feng shui. There's no ring. There we go. Grand. So, uh, from People's Brewing, we have their St. Boniface German Fest. Uh, a traditional Oktoberfest-style lager brewed with German hops and five German malts for a complex, bready character. So. Released for the annual German Fest held by St. Boniface Parish in Lafayette, a celebration of the church's over 150-year-old German heritage. 26 IBUs, 6% alcohol by volume. I thought it was our in-state beer. It is. It's not from Ohio? What with the German no. heritage? What does St. Boniface saint? I, why did you verb that? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. That's a question. The what is St. Boniface... <laughs> what is what do blue? <laughs> Carrots. But no, what is St. Boniface saint? Like, what is he the saint of? Is he the saint of hopes, dreams, keys, pickles? <laughs> He's the saint of pickles. Let's go with that. Hey, Adam? Yes? Grab the bottle. Now I can grab the bottle? It's okay now? It's yes. now that we're done with your little bottle shroud? No, it's a saint. What do you want me to do with it? Hit yourself very, very hard. I mean, usually it's described the bottle, but I can. we've already described it. Um, I don't think we've described it. I mean, they saw it, I guess. Uh, based off this, you got a saint. He's doing some Jesus-y things with his hands. Uh, there's people surrounding him, like a round table. I think he's a saint of the round table, and he's drinking out of a wooden mug. So it's going to taste oaky. Hint of Jesus. Um, so we might have some Jesus juice in this one. And friendship. This went terribly wrong, real quick. What part? Just, oh, yeah. The Jesus juice? You know how to fix it? Drinking. Which if one? anybody cares, St. Boniface is the patron saint of Germania. So he saints what now? The whole Germany? Germany? The saint of germs? All of Ohio? Saint of medicine? Saint of germs? Oh, Germania. Germania was the Roman term for the geographical region in North Central Europe inhabited mainly by Germanic peoples. Quite. Yes. Yes. Now that I've had drink time to mull that Indeed. over. Listen, slap nuts. Drink your beer. Slap nuts. I am. I'm the only one drinking it. First one? Closest? I don't know how this show gets any easier for you, and yet somehow you look to complicate uh, things. IV of beer. To my brain. Could you talk about it? Or are you going to go nine sips deep? Talk about the beer? Talk about your day. That's what we're all here to do. We don't care. Nobody well, uh, since Pete you. asked, my day Even was up. you don't care about your day, talk about the beer. Hey, what? Rob left, left me some things to science. Talk about the beer. Science? Talk about it. Is he going to pick that up for you? Because that's kind of a move. Eventually. Eventually um, he will. Talk about the beer. <laughs> I don't know, like, it's um, it's not as Germany as I was expecting. Um, it's kind of, like, it's kind of a smoother, crisp, like, I'm not getting... Not getting Germany out of that, are you? I don't know, I guess I was expecting a little bit more, like, 
flavor like and I'm I think I'm just nervous because the video. Were you expecting a pumpkin beer and it's not? Is that no, is that what I don't the problem think that's here what is? It was. I, I, I guess I was expecting a thicker mouthfeel, a thicker beer because Oktoberfest I typically associate with a thicker beer. Um, this one's a little bit more like smoother than I was expecting, so I guess my expectations just unfortunately tainted in my mouth. So like a Marzen? What about a Marzen? Do you know what a Marzen is? Yeah, um, it is somebody who is from Mars, and then they come to Earth. Talking about Marzen. Uh, yeah, a Marzen is somebody like uh, Marvin was one. Marvin was a Marzen. Um, so yeah, any other stupid questions or easy nope. questions? Hey, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> if we could not, uh, if we could not knock the bar over, that would uh, that would be ideal. It's actually pretty impressive because this is a heavy bar. I'm a heavy, strong man. <laughs> heavy, strong man. You're a heavy, strong idiot. Idiots can push things too. Like jackass. Do you like dumb. cake? They're okay. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so. I would actually say that this is a, a pretty good example of the style. Uh, it's it's malty. It's got some crispness to it. Uh, it. It is a little bit more mild than some of the stuff we've had recently. I know we've kind of been into the, the two extremes, either the IPAs or like the Scouts and Porters. Um, this one is reminiscent of just a good, true Oktoberfest style beer. Um, it's, it's a good example of the pipe. You've got the malt. It isn't particularly bitter. Um, it's pretty drinkable, and I'm sure that a lot of people could get themselves in trouble at Oktoberfest festivities with this because it, it, it's pretty approachable. Uh, not terribly heavy on the hops, which is not surprising. Uh, again, the malt is there. It's got some sweetness to it, but none of it overpowering. It's just a good, mild beer. Do you have more to say? I don't know why everybody's stopping. <laughs> Just, I don't know how many more times I need to threaten you. We, if this goes on much further, we might have to educate you as to the capital of Thailand. Hookers? <laughs> <laughs> Hookers? <laughs> <is the capital? laughs> it has the um, fall Oktoberfest type mouthfeel to me. It is very much a... Have you ate a lot of leaves? Yeah, I've ingested quite a few leaves. Cookies, it has ghosts, pumpkins, <sighs> cornucopias, copious amounts of cornucopias. Black hats. That's Halloween. That is Halloween. Yeah. I, we were doing like Thanksgiving, and anyway, it to me is it tastes very much like any other Oktoberfest style beer that's not a pumpkin beer to me, except um, toned down. It there's there's it's. Mild and malty, like Rob said, but it, it has some of the complex characteristics that you kind of expect from the style. So if it's something that you're not, if it's something you don't normally do, if it's something that you're curious about, I would say snag this one as a warm up. If you're finding that you kind of like it, go nuts, because I think this is almost the base of, of nuts. Well, of the Oktoberfest beer, and then it gets. There's more layers. It's more complicated, you know, kind of from here. But this is a good all-around beer, and it's three. well, it's one that I could drink throughout the entire season. Quite frankly, I I like it enough to where, you know, so it's a raking leaf beer. We haven't gotten to that part yet. That's sorry, our rating oh, sorry, part. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead and sorry. rate it. I'm gonna give this one a solid. Um, the more I drink of it, uh, and now that my expectations I realized were wrong at the time, like, I like it. Um, it is easy drinking. It is a good introductory one. You do have a little bit more of the maltiness. Um, after listening to you guys, I realized that I was kind of wrong on this one. So I appreciate you guys this using... One. Yeah, I mean, this is... First this, time. This is new. I figured you guys should just have one. When did touching become a thing? Don't you dare. I do it all the time. You guys just can't... <laughs> you going to spin it? Heads. Tails. Uh, where was I going? Yeah, so solid. Not my favorite style, though. Preferred style, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Get your own inside joke right. I just have so many. Uh, I'm going to give this joke? one... You know what? I'm going to go, I'm gonna go double solid on this one. I don't know. Something's uh, hanging off of you. I, uh, 
I like how everything works together. I, I like the fact that it is pretty approachable. I like that it's drinkable. Um, obviously, now is the season for Oktoberfest. So, uh, kind of everybody has them out there. And of the ones that oh. I've had so far, this is one of my favorites. So, I'm going to go with Double Solid. Ooh. Did you get the reaction on the second time he said it? Yeah. He wasn't paying attention the first time I said it. I was helping you. I was grooming you. He had a leaf on him. He did all the tips. Um, I don't know yet. There's just so many luscious locks. <laughs> I don't I don't know how people do that in real life or how it's ever you supposed did to it. be attractive. Yeah, I just did it. Um, and I got a tingly feeling. Shut up your face. It's not my face. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a... Double solid as well, and it's Ooh. quite frankly the first um, time I had to say it this time. I haven't had, I haven't had an October beer that hits me kind of like this one does, and it's not because it's anything. Um, well, it's unique that it it it's just a good clean beer. I enjoy it. It's not trying to do anything crazy, and it you can I mean you could walk around all day drinking this stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. All I day? don't know what all day. All day, all through, uh, all through the October autumn day. What's your beer per hour, though? Is it one per hour? Or is it well, one per hour is somewhat responsible. So all day. Let's say you're awake for sixteen hours. Sixteen beers. Pace yourself. You're you gonna do that. You can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. But pacing yourself was an hour, is what you said. Well, about a beer an hour. Okay. All right. So what? I think I think you should do this. I ne- think this. I think this could be the next. This uh, might be a little expensive for me to do that. I mean, price point. Uh, so this was actually part of a pick six, so we don't really have a good price point. But Peoples is usually pretty affordable. It's, yeah, it's they're, they're good Peoples. The, um, I would be surprised if it's outside of kind of the ten to twelve dollars for a six pack range. So sixteen. Well, I'm looking, we only need thirty dollars. I'm looking like for a thirty six case of boxer beer if I'm going to go all day drinking. Nope. Gross. Hey, you tell you find me better thirty five cent a can beer. 35 cents a can? It works out to about 35 cents a can. Adam's alcohol? See, the problem is I don't accept the premise that there's good 35 cents a can beer. Hey, it tastes solidly like beer. I mean, there's no denying it tastes like beer. Quality of beer, eh, you know. No things taste like beer. No things aren't beer. What's our other beer? Speaking of beer. I don't know. Our out-of-state beer. If I had to guess. So, for our out-of-state beer, we have Urban Chestnuts... Oh, uh, this multi yet well balanced Marison style lager is easy to drink but difficult to pronounce. That's why Oa Capsule Schroft is lovingly referred to as Ocats by our staff. Good because call. our only Bavarian born brewmaster can pronounce its name correctly. We all agree Bavarian humor can be interesting. Don't I'm mostly Just German for cheer. Oh, I'm mostly a fan of the desserts, I suppose. Uh, you got a can. There's a squirrel on the bottom, drunk squirrel. Up top, you got some colors, blue and white. So it's O-Cats, and then you got a squirrel Just drinking beer. So it's going to taste kind of nutty. A little bit of bushy, bushiness for a beer. Um, so it's not going to be too bad uh, as far as prices go and stuff. Drink it. Um, Drink it. I, I'm sorry, our, uh, what, one of our interns is, is showing us. Is that for the people to the o Okay, so apparently a four pack of pint cans is seven forty nine. And you said you can do sixteen, so times that by four, eight. Well, but that was a twelve ounce. This is sixteen. Ooh, what's that? So, uh, case of 24, 44, 94. You can do that easily. Drink the beer. Drink your bushy squirrel nutty beer. So very nice to squirrels. Uh, this one's a little bit thicker. Um, I taste none of the things that Adam said. Thank God. Bushiness or squirrels? No. Nuts? There's some nut. Just one. Yeah, we, we call, why, do you, why do you do this? We call that a lance beer. We don't. If it's just we one. don't. Not now. Not ever. <laughs> it's not a thing that we do. It could uh, be a thing. I, I mean, it's a lance beer. Credit, it's credit not, to the Speak podcast if that catches <laughs> on. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's not overly nutty. So yeah, it's just, just half nut. Adam has or absolutely no money if you want to try and pursue him. Who, Lance? He does get a little spiteful. Yeah, slight nuts. Um, sorry, a lance level of nuts. A um, little bit more thick. I don't know. I get a thicker mouth feel. A little bit more complexity. Lance um, is not as thicker in his mouth. We're great. Can we move on? Uh, sure, I'm done. 
Do you have beer words? Probably not. Um, thick. <laughs> yep, nope, moving on. Sounds like a good plan. Uh, Nuts. So, uh, much like the last one, uh, this one is, is pretty malty. Uh, malty, that was a good one. Not uh, not quite as refreshing, not quite as, as crisp as, as the last. Um, that, again, definitely a little bit more viscous. It's got uh, a touch more body to it. Um, still not getting a lot of hops, which is a good thing. Um, again, another one that's just pretty indicative of the style. Uh, it's it's very uh, again like the last one, very kind of reminiscent of the the true the real uh, Marzen style beers, which you know when when brewers in America uh, try different things, usually they kind of like to to put their own twist on them. And both uh, Peoples and um, Urban Chestnut pretty much went uh, straight at this one. Though the fact that they have a Bavarian brewer that probably shouldn't be surprising. So a little bit more malty than the last. A little uh, a touch more of an alcohol taste to it. Uh, I think the, the increased. The percentage higher? I don't know. It's just to me that's what I'm getting, and I think because of the increased malt, that's why you almost get a nut type flavor. And it's definitely a heavier beer. It doesn't fall in my all-day drinking category, but not a bad beer overall. Pardon me. Not a bad beer overall. You remember our new rating system for the out-of-towners? Actually, this will be the first time anyone's been introduced to the rating system because stuff and things. Things and timing. And we've talked about it, but that will be in the future. So we should probably discuss it now. No, no. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you have a new rating system uh, brought to you by the Speak Podcast, and if I had to use words to describe that, would you do? I think it would be that every time I saw it, I would buy it. Would be the top choice. Nope. If I saw it, I would sometimes buy it, well, and I wouldn't buy it at all if I saw it. I'd be like, I'm so what? Are, what are the ratings? What are the actual words? Always, sometimes, never. Good job, Betty. And it's been like a whole week since we did that. I feel kind of like, my brain hurts though. So can I sit this one You up? can rate it. You can go ahead and get that over with. I think never. I mean, I have I guess because I've already had it. Um, so how could it be never? <gasps> one time? Is that a choice? No. Uh, I mean, I, I've had it. I It's not my preferred style. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like never is just, I feel like always, sometimes, and never is just too, is there like, in, is there in-between grades? We do a lot of in-between stuff. Uh, rarely. How about that? No, we can't make up a whole new word. It's that's like not a, a word. It's like, that's it's like a half sometimes. A half never. No, because that, no. No, if you no. run, I'm running up, so the half never is now up. So Fine, I, so a half never. Yeah, half never. Rob, where are you at on this? You know, still zero. But. Uh, I'm pretty close to it always on this one it's it's not quite as good as the people's but it's pretty close mostly uh, so uh, now i don't know if it's i don't know if this is a, a seasonal i don't know kind of what the availability would be i would assume so because most Oktoberfests are uh, but especially if it is a seasonal where you can only get it once a year essentially during one season um then i'm pretty pretty close to it always especially at that price point if you're buying Oktoberfest in may <coughs> Ew. No, go on, Mike. You were saying something important. Ew. He has a lot of quarters to pick up, by the way. Science. Um, oh, I can pick it up. Half never. Get your... <laughs> I give it a half never. Oh, it's that's a, that's a good that's a, that's a good word somebody made up. You didn't make it up. I did. Well, maybe you I said half never. never. Literally, for my right. <laughs> anyway, it's a half never because it's. It's fine, but it doesn't uh, doesn't crack my top ten my preferred with Oktoberfest. I don't think that a Marzen is my preferred style in general, but yeah. I do like the whole. It comes around once a year in like mass quantities, and that's kind of fun. Same thing with pumpkin beer, where I get like a pumpkin beer or two into it, and then it's like, all right, I've had my fill. I did have uh, Mike's pumpkin beer at Grand Junction, however. Set back. Hey, it's like he's there. It's like we're looking right at him. Or he's looking right at us. Well, and I need to uh, I need to speak 
of Indiana okay. breweries whilst, mm. whilst we're at it. Do you, uh, while, while you're getting that worked up, do you want me to do the sports question? No. No. Or do, do we want to go out on a high note? Well, I don't. <laughs> do like getting high. What? Let's let's fire it off, but be concise. So, this one actually has two possible answers. See, I'm gonna have to get both. So I can't be concise. Be concise. So, describe for me both the sport Baseball. and the definition of the term. Five. Ball in hand. Well, how apropos. <laughs> Sometimes, um, sometimes there's team sports, right? But you can't always which find a team yes, sport. Sometimes there are. Which one are we talking? About? All right, so baseball. Sometimes you can't always find a teammate. So what you have to do is you have to rely upon yourself to put that ball in the hand, um, and then you swing. Baseball. Yeah. No. Basketball. Again. Basketball. That's when you get a rebound. I got ball in hand, and then you pass it one-handed. No. Um, other sports have balls. Lots. Soccer. That's when you catch it when you're not supposed to. Like, ball in hand, sir, and then you drop it. What? Ha- what? Well, ha- actually, you're kind of getting close. What happens when you ball in hand in soccer, though? You get a red card. No. I mean, if you if you pop it. Like, if you aggressively ball that in your hand. <laughs> are you aggressively handing it, or are you aggressively balling it? I don't know that that's ever acceptable. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends if it's soccer or football. They have different opinions on what's too aggressive down there. You're dangerously close to more science. Yeah, wrong. wrong, 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 wrong. What else is bears? Volleyball. It's when you catch it. You're wrong. not supposed to. Are they? Yeah. Has it been any of the balls that he's mentioned yet? No. More balls, Adam. Football. No. It's when you travel. <laughs> like to the game. Yeah, like when you uh, you have a sport and you're trying to get down there, so you travel to that sport. No. Tennis. When you swing. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, now you're just throwing it in. This is no fun. Is that close? With any of those balls? No. No. All right, give, give him the ball. Pool. Okay. You don't play, just grab him. And you rack him good. You got balls in here. Could you give him the ball? <laughs> well, I don't so one of is he going to give me a ball? Is billiards? Uh-huh. Now that... Describe it. Ball in hand is when, like... A lot of people say, like, I got this one in the... Pocket? No. Like, this one's in the can. Like, this one's this one's I a guarantee. Think... So, like, you say, I got this ball in hand. Like, it's guaranteed you're going to do it. Like, yeah, it's like, I got that ball in hand. In billiards, ball in hand is being able to place the cue ball anywhere on the table for your next shot, or in some cases, ball in hand anywhere behind the head string. Yeah, it's obviously a very favorable position to be in, and is usually only available when the opposing player has committed a foul under a particular game's rules. Right. This can be compared to a penalty shot in hockey or a free throw in basketball, according to billiards form. I mean, I gave an abbreviated version of that. You didn't. You gave an elongated version of stupid. You gave elongated. Uh, a ball in hand is also. Yeah, what's the other sport? Take you said that you were, you said that you were going to get both of them. Why would you? Why would you do this? Uh, you you said. I mean, you said it was th- basketball. It's like it's when you no, get a free I throw. I never did. Yeah, I thought they said ball in hand is. That's one definition. There are two. You did this to yourself. We could have really moved did. on. Croquet. Okay. Um. Sometimes you have to just force that ball through that billy whacker. I think it's called. So like sometimes you like you hit it and then get stuck. And the billy whacker, so you have to get down on your hands and knees, and you have to take that ball in your hand and just shove it through the billy whacker. What is the billy whacker? You know, it's the metal thing, the billy whacker. Oh, wicket? No, it's the metal thing. It looks like a it looks like a tunnel for balls. Billy whackers. Are you not familiar with billy whackers? Apparently not. No. Some of us are far more familiar with billy whacking than others. I know a cheap one. Uh, Define billy whacker. Oh, the closest I get is Billy Walker. <laughs> so does it mention balls? Did he, he have balls? Did he? Perform? He was an American country music singer. He had balls. Oh, very fond of croquet. Yeah. No, I nailed it. Ball in hand for croquet. A ball that must be moved by the player according to the rules of croquet without using a mallet. 
For example, I got the spawn if drive? a ball travels out to <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> I didn't think I got the spawn. Alright, that's that's weird. That's a weird feeling. <laughs> something's something's wrong. You you were so focused on the billy whacking that you, you you just moved right over that. Is that like boomeranging and bang danging? Bushwhacking, bushwhacking and boomeranging. Not going to go anywhere good. Read your thing. Well, read your thing. As surely you've all been staring at my bust. Uh, books and brews. He does have ample, ample bosoms. I do. And uh, <laughs> so, did you guys know they're opening their first out-of-state franchise? Yes. Well, could... oh wait. <laughs> No, tell me more. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. I knew. So, uh, why why you got to ruin? It? Anyway, anyway, I'm surprised. Wheat Ridge, Colorado, what is one? getting their own books and brews. Wheat Ridge, Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Let's grow a lot of wheat on that ridge. Well, Jess Harris really no, uh, lived in Indiana for a little while. Some unfortunate events happened, brought him back to Colorado, but he really enjoyed his. Uh, Time here at the 96th Street location of Books and Brews, the OG Books and Brews. So he decided to take it back home, Colorado. So best of luck out in CO. No, I agree. Yeah, best of luck. Yeah, yeah. No. I mean, no, that's good. I mean, that's uh, I mean, that's gonna be their first out of state location. So I mean, that's good. Thank you for reiterating in the exact same words what Pete just said. The other news: get it right this time with your playing dumb. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's news? He's not, he's not <laughs> Books and Brews is coming to campus. You can read news on the internet? Look, just I'll, this, I'll, look, I'll just look, go. look, just look. Keep going. This I'll, is a press release that Books and Brews was nice enough to give to us, and you're wrecking it. How dumb do you want me to go? They're coming to U of I. U of I. Where one of our interns is going, and we'll never, ever get credit. Uh, ever. However. Yes, they will. You have to keep them coming. Evan and Melissa Sandulo, they uh, recently relocated to Indianapolis from the greater Chicagoland area with their three children. Three kids head first into a uh, brewing business. Best of luck to you guys. This one is much closer by than Colorado. I feel like uh, maybe let us know when it's open. We'll go. Yeah, I mean, I have no problem going. Um, as Pete said, I'm trying to help, but I just make it worse. Your turn. I your, think your turn to make it worse, or what? What's going on here? Well, I I don't know how I was expecting this to go. I don't know if it's better or worse than I was expecting. But anyway, two new books and brews locations: books and brews at brewery that started ninety sixth Street, Indiana Brewery. It's spreading. <laughs> That's good news. They do quality beer. Check them out. That's that's really all I got on that particular subject. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably all that we really have for this Octo- special Oktoberfest ep- episode as a whole. My God, I'm so sorry. Do, do the thing. Just do the thing. Wait, but what are you guys going to be for Halloween? Are you going to be Tormund? Or are you going to be... 